it's Alex from Risk Academy and today I wanted to talk about are risk heat maps useful or risk maps or heat maps you can call them whatever you, are they useful and I think my, my simple answer is no they are not in they're not useful in any capacity um, because there are better ways of communicating the same thing and those better ways are more closely aligned with the sort of the fundamental message of uh, ISO 31000 or other uh, other guidelines on uh, risk management which talk about the need for greater integration of risk analysis into the decision making into the operational processes so that there are at least two better actually there are three better ways of communicating risk messages in the context of objectives, decisions, uh, business processes, than heat maps. And by using those tools, you pretty much would decide to never use heat maps uh, again. So, what are the three? So I'll start from the simple one and sort of go to the more complex one. The easiest way to completely get rid of heat maps and replace them is show your graphically show your objectives under risk or at at risk. So for example, uh, in the previous company where I worked, there was an objective of uh, opening uh, 50 new plants by year 2016. 50 new uh, operational manufacturing plants. Um, so we figured out that we should graphically present what portion of that strategic objective is at risk. So we said, well, you know, 30 out of 50, so this is a spectrum, 50, 30 out of 50 have already been opened. So there's no risk to that particular strategic KPI. There's a risk uh, that they may not be operational, etc., etc., but that's a different story. So 30, no, no risk. Now, out of the remaining 20, 15 have been uh, commissioned, you know, underway, should open within the deadlines. And with this, within those 15, we had a methodology of breaking down each one and allocating to a particular risk class, saying, well, this one, this particular plant, we're quite comfortable that it will be open in time, and this is a, not, this is a low risk uh, for the organization. But there were a few that were high risk of delays, and that would impact on the strategic, strategic objectives. Now, the remaining five, they weren't even in the pipeline, so that was under risk as well, at risk uh, amount. So we showed that the out of 50, there's a certain amount at risk, the planned ones which are likely to be delayed, as well as something that is not yet mi that's uh, missing from the pipeline and has to be figured out. So that's number one. You can actually take any objective or any decision and figure out how to graphically present it with the risk information embedded. This is a much better way than showing just an abstract heat map with risks. Because after all, risks is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. So why don't you show instead objectives with uh, the risk information attached? So that's number one, that's the easy one. Second one is slightly more complicated and they're called tornado charts or tornado diagrams. Um, and this is a nice graphical way of representing what sort of factors, what sort of risks have different impacts on the overall objective, for example, liquidity or profitability, whatever the objective uh, uh, for you at, at the time is, or the schedule. You can actually, using some uh, sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis in Excel, you, you can show what impact each of those risks will have on your final objective. And tornado diagrams are great way of representing. I, I sincerely hope that one day they will replace all heat maps forever. Uh, but there's an even better way, this is number three, and it's the result of Monte Carlo simulations, where you can show the distribution of the final result. And instead of saying that uh, you know we expect a profit of one billion, you can say, well, actually, with the risks in mind, your profitability may be between 700 and 1 billion point one. And uh, there are certain risks that affect that. So there are at least three better ways of showing risk information in the context of the actual business objectives than heat maps. So I sincerely hope that one day we will completely forget about those heat maps and we'll never use them.
and use them again. If you agree or disagree, write comments underneath this video. And if you like more videos like that, please sign up for the Risk Academy YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.